Hi everybody, thank you so very much for joining me today. My name is Sharon and I am back with Fernando. And guess who Fernando is today? Should we do the other side too? Fernando is swimming in the ocean, under the water, in and out of the coral reefs. What is he? He is a shark. That's right. We dressed Fernando up as a shark for this week because we're continuing to talk about animals. And this week we are talking about ocean animals. So things like crabs and octopus and sharks and dolphins and any kinds of things that you may see on the beach when you go to the beach with your moms or dads or other family members and all sorts of little tropical fish. Things like these beautiful blue colored fish swimming in the water. There are so many different ocean critters, aren't, aren't there, Fernando? There's many. And Fernando's favorite though is, you guessed it, his favorite is the shark. That's why he wanted to make a huge shark fin on his back and pretend that he was a shark. So welcome everybody. I'm going to just show you some of our vocabulary words that we're working on this week. Our wonderful word of the week here is underwater. That's right, underwater. Have you ever swam under the water? Have you ever snorkeled in the ocean? where you have to wear a special mask, have a breathing tube, um, flippers, all sorts of things. And you could, just like in this picture, stay close to the surface of the water, but dip your head under and swim and see all of the beautiful fishies, all sorts of different ones. That would be a magnificent experience if you could ever do that. I would highly recommend it. I think Fernando would too. The other vocabulary card that we picked out this week is called coral reef. Coral reef. You may remember from our greeting circle, we talked a little bit about what, what these are. And they're basically like walls in the ocean, in the shallow parts of warm ocean waters and they're walls that are built from the skeletons of teeny tiny animals called coral. And these skeletons layer on top of each other to, perform, to, to produce these, these walls and, and shelf-like um, protrusions within the ocean waters. And what happens is they start forming different parts that extend out. They kind of circle around different different pieces of each other to form hiding places within these waters. And lots of different ocean critters, different colorful tiny fishies, all sorts of different animals will hide in the coral reef because there's so many places that they can and they'll hide from animals like Fernando the shark. So the coral reef is definitely a wonderful area of the of the Earth's oceans to, to study and to look forward to seeing one day. Okay, so today we've selected a very special story. I'm just going to let you sit there, Fernando. Fernando the shark. Okay, and this story is called Commotion in the Ocean. Let's have a look at it. Commotion in the Ocean, and it is written by Gilles Andrea and David Wojtowicz. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Have a look. There's a curious commotion at the bottom of the ocean. I think we ought to go and take a look. You'll find every sort of creature that lives beneath the sea swimming through the pages of this book. There are dolphins, whales, and penguins. There are jellyfish and sharks. 
There's the turtle and the big white polar bear. But can you see behind the wrecks and in between the rocks? Let's take a look at who's hiding there. Can you see? Let's look through the pages to discover more. Crab. The crab likes walking sideways, and I think the reason why is to make himself look sneaky and pretend that he's a spy. And there's the turtles. Turtles, we crawl up the beach from the water to bury our legs on dry land. Did I just say legs on dry land? Eggs on dry land. Let's try that again. Turtles, we crawl up the beach from the water to bury our eggs on dry land. We lay a whole batch and then when they hatch, they scamper about in the sand. And we learned that from an earlier story, I believe, where we learned that, that turtles have to lay their eggs and those eggs hatch and those little tiny turtles have to get to the water on their own to develop the muscles in their legs in order to swim. Angelfish. Hello, I'm the angelfish, darling, the prettiest thing in the sea. What a shame there are no other creatures as gorgeous and lovely as me. There's the angelfish. She is very special looking. And here's jellyfish. The jellyfish just loves to jiggle, which other fish think is quite dumb. She knows that it's not all that useful, but jiggling's lots of good fun. I don't know if I like that word dumb. I think I'll replace it. Can you think of another word that we can replace it with? What if we use the word, let's try using the word silly. The jellyfish just loves to jiggle which other fish think is quite silly. She knows that it's not all that useful, but jiggling's lots of good fun. It doesn't rhyme, but that's okay. I like that word better than the other one. It's kinder. Shark, you see that, Fernando? Here's the shark. I swim with a grin up to meet you. See how my jaws open wide? Why don't you come a bit closer? Please take a good look inside. Look at that shark's teeth. Looks like little starfish are shouting yikes as they're trying to get away from the shark. Swordfish, that's an interesting name. I love to chase after small fishes it keeps me from getting too bored. And then when I start feeling hungry, I skewer a few on my sword. See his sword there? And here's octopus. Having eight arms can be useful. You may think it looks a bit funny, but it helps me to hold all my children and tickle each one on the tummy. See how she's tickling them? Stingray. At the bottom of the ocean, the stingray flaps his wings. But don't you get too close to him. His tail really stings. See that zap at the end of this at the end of the tail of the stingray? And that picture doesn't really quite show us, but stingrays are quite flat creatures. And it does look like their fins are wings because they're long and wide and flat. And here's a lobster. Never shake hands with a lobster. It isn't a wise thing to do. With a clippity clap and a snippity snap, he would snip all your fingers in two. Oh my goodness. Deep sea. Miles below the surface, where the water's dark and deep, live the most amazing creatures that you could ever meet. 
There are fish of all descriptions, of every shape and size. Some have giant pointy teeth and great big bulging eyes. Did you hear that, Fernando? Some of them can walk around and balance on their fins. But the strangest fish of all have glowing whiskers on their chins. Can you find a fish with a glowing whisker? This one right here looks interesting. And this one right here looks like it has a flashlight, a built-in flashlight on his forehead that makes him be able to see at the bottom of the ocean. That's very interesting. Ah, blue whale. There's no other beast on the planet as big as the giant blue whale. He measures a mass of 100 feet long from his head to the tip of his tail. Wow, that's bigger than my house. And here on the very bottom, do you see those, those dots along the bottom of the blue whale? Those are called barnacles. Barnacles, we're just a bunch of barnacles and all we do is cling. We know it's not that glamorous, but it's our favorite thing. Barnacles, they're like hard little shell-like circles that stick to the bottom of things. And like they said, they just cling. Oh, here we go. Our bodies are covered with blubber and our tusks are incredibly long. We're grumpy and proud and we bellow out loud to show that we're mighty and strong. Do you know what those are called? Walruses. It's got that W there. If you remember from our morning message, we showcased that, that letter W with Wally the whale. Remember Wally the whale flipped his tail? That's the same sound w as walruses. Penguins. We waddle around on our icebergs which makes our feet slither and slide. And when we get closer to the water, we leap with a splash off the side. And here's polar bears. Deep out in the Arctic, the mummy polar bear snuggles up with all her children since it's very cold out there. I like that, that picture. Wow, what a lot of creatures we have seen beneath the sea. But a lot of funny things they do. Some of them might lick their lips and eat you in one bite. And some might want to swim around with you. The dolphin's very friendly and the lobster's very fierce. But the shark is the most dangerous by far. Can you name the other friends? We've made along the way. See if you can tell me who they are. Can you see in this photo? We see some, right? What's that one, Fernando? That's, yeah, the dolphin. There's the swordfish. That looks like the blue whale. The shark. The octopus. The lobster. That's right and a whole bunch of bubbles. Fernando really wanted to, to sing uh, one of his favorite songs, but it takes all of our participation to help make it really, really, really fun. So this is a song about different ocean animals, and we have to use our imagination and our creativity to move our hands in ways that mimic the actions of those ocean critters. I bet you've heard this song before. It's called Slippery Fish. So if we think of some ocean critters, we can first think of slippery fish. And one way that we could uh, position our hands and make some hand movements to mimic a slippery fish, just go like this. Pretend it's a fish swimming in the water. Another ocean critter could be an octopus, and an octopus often squiggles in the water, so that could look like this. 
Uh, it could look like this. We could even call jellyfish, the, je the moves of a jellyfish, squiggling moves. So we could use that ocean critter too. We could also use the tuna fish. And we learned that tuna fish like to swim in the water or even splash in the water. We could even use dolphins and pretend that they're diving in the water. We could use sharks and pretend that they're lurking in the water with their shark fin exposed over the surface of the water, right? Yes. So all sorts of different ocean animals. So let's start singing the song. I'm going to get Fernando to help me and I'd love for you guys at home to also help me. Are you ready, Fernando? Okay, let's start with slippery fish, okay? So it goes like this. Slippery fish, slippery fish, swimming in the water. Slippery fish, slippery fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no! What happened, Fernando? It's been eaten by a octopus. Octopus, octopus, squiggling in the water. Octopus, octopus, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, oh no. It's been eaten by a, what's another ocean critter, Fernando? What should we use? Dolphin. Okay, it's been eaten by a dolphin. <sighs> Beautiful blue dolphin. Beautiful blue dolphin diving in the water. Beautiful blue dolphin. Beautiful blue dolphin. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, it's been eaten by a. What's the next one? A tuna fish. Okay. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, splashing in the water. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, oh no, Fernando. What, what, what did it eat? It's been eaten by a great white shark, great white shark lurking in the water. A great white shark, a great white shark. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no, oh no, what happened? It's been eaten by a humongous whale, humongous whale, spouting in the water. Humongous whale, humongous whale, gulp, Gulp, gulp. <gasps> Fernando, what gobbled up the humongous whale? What could it be? Are you ready to find out? Let's find out. Humongous whale got gobbled up by Lily the mermaid, Lily the mermaid, Splashing in the water. Lily the mermaid, Lily the mermaid. <gasps> Burp. Lily, oh my goodness. Lily had a lot to eat. Are you feeling better now? That was our surprise ending to the song because Lily got dressed up as an ocean critter too with her beautiful mermaid tail. Thank you, Lily. Fernando, great white shark, thank you so much. Maybe friends at home, you could teach your family members some of those lyrics to the song and come up with different parts to it too. All sorts of ocean critters that we talked about, right? We learned more angelfish, uh, walruses, even penguins were listed in that book. Now I have a little, a little story, just a little magnet story. It's kind of a counting game to show you guys. 
that I wanted to bring out. And it is actually called Five Dancing Dolphins. So let's have a look at these five dancing dolphins. And this could be something that you act out at home too. You could teach your mom or teach your dad. Let's start. Are you ready, Fernando? Let's start. It's called Five Dancing Dolphins. So here's one dancing dolphin on a sea of blue. Guess what she did? She called her sister. And then there were two. Two dancing dolphins swimming in the sea. They called for mother. And then there were three. That's right. Three dancing dolphins swimming close to shore. They called for daddy. And then there were four. That's right. Four dancing dolphins in a graceful dive. They called for baby. And then there were one, two, three, four, five. You're right, five. Five dancing dolphins on a sea of blue waved goodbye as they swam out of view. There goes five. And then there goes four. And then there goes three. And then there goes two. And then one. And now there are none. That's right. Five dancing dolphins. I really like that story. And I like those photos. Now we wanted to show you one more thing before we close out our circle time. And here, Fernando, do you want to help me hold it? Here is a photo of a beach and an ocean. What do you notice about this photo? How do we know it's, a, it's ocean waters there? What, what makes us think that it's a, it's a beach along an ocean? Hmm. Can you see the waves? It's a pretty big waves, that's for sure. Stretches far, far out. So those are ways that we know that that is the ocean. You can see the beach. You can see the clouds in the sky. You can see the rocks, the sea and the shore. What do you know about oceans? What do you remember from, from when you're walking along the beach, along an ocean? What do you remember seeing? Maybe some, some surf coming up, some frothy water coming up onto the beachfront. Maybe some seashells, maybe some crabs, maybe some special shells called sand dollars. We see those around the beaches where I live. And look at this globe here. You can see all of the water here. All of that is ocean. So for Earth, water is more common. There's more water than there is land on Earth. That's right. Okay, next time you go to the beach along an ocean shore, look out for some of those items and see what kinds of things you can explore. Even when you dig under the sand, you might find some little surprises. This next photo I wanted to show you as well is just a beautiful photo. And it shows a picture of an orca whale underwater. 
What can you tell me about this animal? It's white and black. That's right, Fernando. Good job. It does have fins. You can see the fins along his side and the, his top fin and even his tail fin. Do you notice anything else? Whales are different from fish a little bit, aren't they? Although you can't see it in this photo, a whale has a hole at the top of his head and it's called a blowhole. When a whale reaches the surface, it takes a deep breath of air through its blowhole. Pretend that you are, are a whale swimming close to the surface and take a deep breath of air once you stick your head out of the water, take a deep breath of air, hold your breath, swim around a little bit. So swim up, swim around under the water a little bit and then come up again and blow that air out. That's what whales do. So remember from our calming strategy at our greeting circle time, we learned that fish have gills and they breathe oxygen. They need to take oxygen out of the water, but they don't breathe in air. They breathe it in water. They breathe in ocean water or, or whatever the case may be where the fish are swimming. But orca whales, they breathe in air. They have to go to the surface of the water, take a breath in, swim around, and go back to the surface to blow that air out. And do you know what? A baby orca whale is called a calf just like a cow. They have the same name. Isn't that interesting? And they're big animals and they're black and white like some cows. So those are other similarities. Very interesting. Fernando helped me pick out that photo. So I hope you liked it. Okay, my friends, we are going to sing a little song to say goodbye, and we hope that you had a good time at Greeting Circle today, and we hoped you liked our little joke where we used Lily the Mermaid to gobble up a humongous whale. That was kind of funny. So let's, let's sing this song. It's the, a goodbye song that we, we introduced earlier, and it sung to the tune of, of Down at Grandpa's Farm. So let's, let's sing it again. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, splash, splash. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, splash, splash. It's time to say goodbye, blow a kiss and wink an eye. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, splash, splash. We can pretend to be an octopus now too, okay? It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, squiggle, squiggle. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, squiggle, squiggle. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, blow a kiss and wink an eye. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, bye bye. Should we do that one one more time? It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, squiggle, squiggle. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, squiggle, squiggle. It's time to say goodbye, blow a kiss and wink an eye. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, squiggle, squiggle. Okay, one more, one more, Fernando. Should we do the shark? It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, lurk, lurk. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, lurk, lurk. It's time to say goodbye, blow a kiss and wink an eye. It's time to say goodbye to all my friends, lurk, lurk. Bye for now, friends. See you next time.